The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not. But the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. You know, so much of man's inventive genius has been spent in devising ways to communicate. There's such a need in each of us to somehow send the message of ourself to someone else. A world circled with telephone wires, incessantly humming with the human voice. And the telegraph key never stops clicking. A birthday message of, please send money, or a typhoon warning. The ship's blinker signals, here I am. Who are you? To whatever other ship may happen to cross its path. And the flood of letters carrying the large and small meaning of our lives flows back and forth endlessly. So many ways to break through that solitary cell in which each of us passes our life. Beyond all these, there's another. Contact company headquarters and find out the enemy concentration around Dagger 4. The place is Korea. It is a night in late October, 1951. Hi, Charles. Hey. You've got about 1,800 yards to cover tonight. This is Lieutenant J.L. Heinmitz. With him is Sergeant Ralph Kirsch. In a few minutes, they will lead a small patrol on what should have been a routine mission across a few thousand yards of what had once been rice paddies but was now a battleground. In that shell-torn area, something will happen that no man alive will ever be able to explain. And some, for want of a smaller word, will call it a miracle. We'll take off in ten minutes, okay? Okay. I'll make sure you get Lewis's letters. Boy, that'll be like pulling teeth. You get them. Okay. What a girl. Will you bring that little girl over here so we can all meet her, boy? <laughs> Don't worry, boy. It'll all be over before you know it. Sixteen. Pretty rough on me, huh? Yeah, you'll draw up another five and make twenty-one. Young bro, why are you such a pessimist? Lousy music. With all the money that you win from me, why don't you go out and buy a new lousy record? Oh, I'm just gonna do that, old buddy. The next time we get to see you, I'm gonna buy me a new version of the same song. Because I sure do love it. Seven guys playing seven steel guitars. Let's play cards. Come on, draw the five. There you go. What'd I tell you? Only a poor little old 20. How do you do that? Well, I tell you, boy, I live a good, clean life. I get plenty of rest and eat lots of raw vegetables. 20, 21, 20, 21. You gotta be pulling something. Oh, now, you shouldn't be accusing nobody of something like that, Dave. I mean, you're practically saying I'm a cheat. Well? Oh, now that... Well, that hurts, old bud. Here, I want you to examine these here cards. 52 of the most... Ooh. I tell you, young blood, if you keep on behaving like that, I just ain't gonna let you play with me no more. Well, there ain't nothing I hate worse than a poor loser. Cossage, don't ride me. Nobody can win day after day without something being wrong. <laughs> and the letters. I'll, I'll put them in the, in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on. You made that little speech last time and those letters were sticking out of your pocket the whole way. I don't dig this chicken outfit. Okay, okay, so they capture me. They find my girl's letters. Is that gonna help them win the war? Huh? Mr. Lewis, they read some of them. Red hot love letters of yours, and they're gonna drop about a division of paratroopers right on your hometown. All volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> Never went out without those letters before. Kind of, kind of like your private rabbit foot, huh? Sausage, what makes you think you know everything about everyone in this outfit? No, no, no. 
Not everybody. Well, not, not the new fella, Fenster. Not him, not yet. Not yet. You know, Lewis, living like we do day after day, sweating out the same problems, hearing the same shells coming in and thinking the same maudlin thoughts about him. Man, peas in a pod ain't even kissing cousins compared to, to us. We are like six strips of bacon cut from the same hunk of pork. One of those strips of bacon kind of stinks. Young blood, you are getting just a little wee bit out of line. So? Who don't? All right. Let's go. Come on, do it. How does it look? Uh, it's still as quiet as Sunday morning, sir. Let's have a look. Well, let's hope this is an easy one. Yes, sir. Come on along now, boy. You're about as ready as you're ever going to be. And the enemy situation in the terrain is the same as this morning's briefing. Now, we'll move out about 1,800 yards on an azimuth of 65 degrees. And that'll take us to Dagger 3. We'll see what kind of fortifications they're building and then back like jackrabbits. Cossage, you keep an eye on the new man. Yes, sir. Okay? Let's go. Six men moving through the unreal quiet of a Korean night. The war seemed to have moved to another planet. Even the natural sounds of night were hushed. No wind, no hum of insect life, nothing. As though Earth itself was holding its breath for the unbelievable occurrence that was now mere moments away. Lewis, you're ready. What's that smell? Garlic. They eat it like we eat peanuts. Hold on. Don't you think you're just a little bit young to die? What do I do now? Can they teach you nothing about booby traps and boot camps, son? Mighty clever little boys. Dog to glove to item tear nine or seven. Fifteen enemy soldiers repairing fortifications on an outpost along Dagger Three. Suggest mortar concentration two eight three. Repeat two eight three. Come now, one of you saw him get hit. Young lad, you were right in front of him. He was scrambling, sir. Oh, get some sleep. Hey. Hey. 
can't see. I'm blind. I can't see. I. Funny guy, wasn't he? Hey, don't bury him yet. Oh, Sarge, you must be kidding. Uh, you know him pretty well, didn't you? How do we him? Back in Georgia, I went home with Buller with him once. Three years ago. Old Carthage. Carthage's pa was in the second division of the first war. And he came back and he raised one of the biggest families in Wheelock County. Carthage couldn't possibly have heard their voices. You know, yet in some secret process of his brain, he sensed them. It was not sound as we understand sound, nor light as we understand light. But when they spoke of him, he was no longer lost. He had direction. He moved towards them. So he came into the army. Go on. Uh, I want to talk about the poor guy. Go on. Go on. You make him sound like one of those saints. He was a pretty good Joe, young blood. Yeah, I can just see a great big picture of him now with that faintly smile on his face holding a crooked deck of cards. Okay, Corporal. <laughs> All you have to do is die and everybody loves you. I said, shut up. Lewis, uh, go on over to the orderly room and pick up that ID stuff, will you? What makes you so miserable? <laughs> Him and his one record. Better be sure to leave Cossage's things there. All right. Let's get rid of this. Tonight, sir? Yes, tonight. Yes, sir. $48, 47 cents. Carried a lot of cash. Cussage was pretty lucky at Blackjack. Yeah. Real lucky kid. 
Nalik's ring. His initials inside. F R C. Come. There's a postcard. With a nice picture of the state capital of Georgia. Must have been his hometown. Wristwatch. There's an inscription on the back. Cassie with love always. Helen. I wonder how many more of my men will get killed before we leave here. I mean, I'm not really sure Cassie is dead. Maybe I should send a couple of men out there to see if they can find him. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll be risking their lives too. One man comes, one man goes. Sometimes I don't even know which way to turn myself. Please, God. Help me. Help me. Deck. That guy was dealing with a phony deck. <laughs> Some saint. Look, they're dog eared from using them too much. The cards get that way. Cossage marked every card in this deck. <laughs> Boy Scout Cossage. Corporal. <laughs> he took 50 bucks a month from me, sometimes even more. Will you shut up? Just because he got it in, in the neck, that doesn't change the way he was. I'm warning you. He was a crook. <laughs> Tell the lieutenant I hit you. Are you that anxious for a court martial? Just tell him. Okay. He was some saint. They were always going to court martial him. That time he almost got thrown out of the cafe concert for being such a loudmouth. And then that time he got drunk. We were in demolition then. <laughs> he took some C3 and a time fuse and flushed it right down. <laughs> and the plumbing wouldn't work. Yeah. He was a real saint. I got seven bucks in my wallet, and I'm going to buy a new pack of cards. And if you try to pull anything, I'll, I'll knock your block off. Come on. How is it possible for a man to hear voices over a mile away? And why did he only hear the voices when they were talking about him? Why weren't their thoughts enough? Now, who could ever begin to answer such questions? But Corporal Cossage, blinded in action, did somehow manage to return to his line. And under the most skeptical questioning, could only repeat again and again the events you have just seen. One man did suggest that perhaps the same instinct was involved that causes lost animals to cross continents to return to their masters. Or, on exactly the same day, each year, causes the swallows to return to Capistrano. Maybe. But 
what's so logical about that? What indeed does cause the swallows to return to Capistrano? There's one thing about the events you've just seen that we know for certain. We know one of the men who lived this adventure into the unknown. His name is Richard Adams of 10499 Seaburg Lane, Los Angeles, California.